This is part two of the NYX Builder Pro. We're gonna go through all the different layers of it and talk about what makes this boot $500. So I'm starting off by tearing the Vibram heel off. Vibram is kind of the industry standard for really durable, long lasting sole material. And I'll also start a little nail counter on the screen so you guys can see how many nails are actually in this boot. It's crazy. And this is kind of a new style of video where I do a voiceover. So let me know what you guys think. How can I improve it? Did I talk too much? Did I talk too little? Did you just want to see me tear a boot apart? Let me know and I'll try my best to improve it. So now that I've got the top lift off, you can see that there's another set of nails underneath. And these nails are different because they, they have a square profile and they're tapered. And what that does is it allows the leather to be expanded as the nails driven in so that the pressure of the leather helps keep that heel block tight and prevents the nails from coming back out. And the heel block is made out of oak bark tanned leather. It's a type of vegetable tan leather that is really hard and durable. So it makes a great sole material that's not gonna overly compress with time. So it makes a really long lasting and durable heel block. And while we're on the heel, let's get to the first question that I asked Nix, why do they have such a big heel? They said the heel balances the boot. Our work boots offer unparalleled arch support, even compared to our competitors. Without the heel, you would feel as if you are leaning back or as if the front of the foot is taller than the back. This is a classic shoe last balancing. And now that we've got the heel block off, let's get the rest of the outsole off, starting with these screws. And I'm counting them as nails because why not? They're fasteners. And the screws are there just to add some extra redundancy to help keep that sole on. Now you might be fooled by how easy this comes off in the video, but this is sped up and it's cut up. But this outsole took me so long to tear off because this thing is glued on really, really well. And while I'm struggling to get the rest of this off, I wanna go back to the heel argument because I'm kind of on both sides of it. I like my limbs that are really flat and I like a heeled boot. I like my flat shoes or boots when I'm just kind of walking around, but when I'm hiking or if I'm doing work that I'm bending down a lot, it's nice to have a little bit of a heel because when you're hiking up really steep terrain, your heel is flexed so much that it wears out your calf super fast. Like when I was a firefighter, it was really nice to have a heel. Or if I'm doing some mechanicing and I'm gonna be bending down and be squatting a lot, it's nice to have a heel. So it just kind of depends on what you're doing and how you walk and how you work. I don't think one side is right or wrong and I think honestly both sides are right. So let me know what you guys think. And now that we've got that outsole off, you can see the two layers of stitching that go all the way through the remaining layers that stitched the vamp to the rest of the boot. And one interesting thing is this boot isn't Goodyear welted. It's a different style of construction. It's kind of a stitched down nailed construction. I don't know what the correct term for it is, but we'll kind of go through that a little bit more as we get to the upper. And after I get all these stitches cut, I'm gonna start pulling off this rubber slip sole. A rubber slip sole is there to help adhere the outsole to the rest of the boot because sometimes if you glue the outsole to just leather, that leather can flake off and not be as strongly bonded and it also prevents any leather on leather squeaking. And you can see what I mean by the leather flaking off when I'm pulling this slip sole off of the leather and that's why it's stitched as well as glued. And now we're down to the leather midsole. So a lot of times in boots, you will see a cork midsole, but the problem is if you're using it in a work boot, a lot of times that cork can dislodge and cause some clumping that you'll feel in the bottom of the, your foot. But with leather, it's gonna take a lot longer to break in and it might not break in quite as much to the shape of your foot, but it's never gonna clump up on you. And that's why you see it in a high-end work boot like this. And now we've got the midsole torn off to where the vamp flanges out to a stitch down construction. So I'm gonna have to start cutting off those threads to loosen it up a little bit better. But now's a really good time to talk about this style of construction. So if you look at the back of the boot near the heel, you'll notice that the upper is rolled and nailed to the insole and sandwiched between the insole and the leather midsole. And the benefit of that in a work boot is you're not relying on any thread or stitching to hold the boot together. So I think that's the main reason why there's so many nails in this boot, that it's a superior construction method, but every single one of these nails has to be driven in by hand, which is crazy. And that brings me to the next question that I asked Nix, 
why the stitch out construction versus Goodyear welted. They said a Goodyear construction is still a good construction, but has some flaws that are stitch down method addresses. All of our boots are constructed with a stitch down method. This construction allows the boot to be snug, fit and consistent, yet have no holes in the boot upper. With a Goodyear welt, the welt is stitched to the vamp through the stitching holes that can allow water to leak into the boot. We find that nicks tend to stay drier than Goodyear welted or hand welted boots. And now that I got the leather midsole off, you can see how beefy this leather is. And I took my little caliper and this stuff comes in at six millimeters thick. And we talked about the leather shank in the previous video, but all of these handmade boot makers use leather shanks unless it's like a lineman boot or something that you're gonna be standing on rungs all day. But basically it's a more comfortable shank that still gives you all the support of a metal shank. And now to my favorite part of the boot, that little sliver of leather that gives you all that extra arch support. And now it's time to try to pry off the upper from the midsole. There's so many nails holding this thing on. So now is a good time to talk about probably the most talked about question in the previous video. Do all the nails that go through this boot end up stabbing me in the foot after these are worn in? And they said the nails are clinched to hold the boot together. Thus, there are no sharp points. In this case, we will see a rounded clinch of the nail from time to time show up on the surface of the insole. These do not cause any discomfort and is one of the reasons we glue a sock liner onto the heel portion of the insole. Pretty much any boot you see with a leather heel stack or that's not a cemented construction, they're all gonna have nails that hold the pieces together, just not nearly as many nails as these NYX boots. So it's pretty common to see nails in boots and I, I wouldn't be too worried about it. The nice thing is if you ever do happen to have for some reason a nail that's sharp that's still sticking all the way through you just take it to the, your local cobbler and they'll put it on the anvil and hit it once and fix it so i finally got the insole separated from the upper and i got i'm going to tear this little sock liner off that we talked about previously and now it's time to dissect the upper so this upper is held on by tons and tons of stitching and that's, you know, that's the difference between a dress boot and a work boot is the amount of time and energy that goes into building the upper of the boot and the amount of stitching that goes into the boot. And right now I'm taking off that counter cover and as I get this off I'm going to pull the counter out and look how beefy this counter is. Like all the other boots we've seen it's always just a little thin piece of plastic or compressed cardboard. This is a really heavy dense, thick piece of veg tan leather for the counter. As for the leather of this boot, so this is an oil tanned leather, which is a chrome tanned leather that is re-tanned with lots of oils and fats to give it that durability, that flexibility, and that water resistance-ness, if that's a word. The thickness of the leather is around three to three and a half millimeters, which is a eight to nine ounce leather, which is super thick. That's the same thickness as that I make my camera harnesses out of to give you some perspective. It's also a full grain leather, so you get that strength of the grain. It's gonna last a long time. And on the parts that are gonna see the most wear, they offer the option to do the flesh out, like you can see in my boots, so that you don't have that grain exposed to any nicks that might compromise the strength of it. And people always ask me if I ever cut myself doing these boots, and they'll see little nicks on my hands but I swear those are all from toaster. I really rarely cut myself with a knife because I use a knife literally every single day, so I have some respect for it, but my cat shows no respect for me and literally tears my hands up nonstop. And now I finally have the vamp off and you can see it's lined with a suede, a yellowish suede leather. That's going to give you an extra layer of protection if you do opt in for a composite toe or a steel toe, which is an option. Another thing in the comment section is people were complaining that the ultimate work boot should have a steel toe. They have that option. I just didn't want that because I didn't want to cut through that much steel on my bandsaw, but it is an option. And now we're getting to the tongue of the boot, which is a thinner and softer leather. It's about 1.5 millimeters or four ounces thick. It's another piece of oil tan leather that's a little more malleable and soft so that it's not gonna kill your front of your foot and your shin to break in. 
And another thing worth noting is all the hardware on these boots are solid brass. Solid brass is good because it's not gonna rust and it's a lot stronger than a lot of the pot metal hardware you see in cheaper boots. Now to the back stay, this thing pretty much speaks for itself. It's just a big chunk of leather with lots of sewing on it to give you some extra support up the shaft of the boot. So hopefully that answers a lot of your questions as I'm finishing off this back stay. I almost lost my voice doing the voiceover for this video. Let me know what you thought of this video. Do you like this style? I thought it was kind of interesting to give you a different type of video, to give you a little more in-depth information on a particular high-end boot. Um, it was a pain in the butt to do, but it was really fun to see how much construction goes into these boots and to see our little nail counter. Can you believe how many freaking nails are in this thing? It's crazy, and they're all put in by hand. So let me know what you guys think. Um, did I miss anything? Is there any more questions you want answered? If there are more questions, just put them in the comment section. I'll send them off to Nick's and I'll put their answers in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. And don't forget, Nix is doing that 10% discount. I'll put the information in the description, but the sale ends at the end of the month. So if you've been eyeballing one of these, now's a great time to do it because these handmade boots don't go on sale very often. And Nix was so generous to offer a 10% discount, which is huge for a handmade boot. So check them out if you want one of these boots. I don't think you can go wrong with it. And if you do get a pair of boots, let me know how it goes for you. Send me some pics on Instagram at rose underscore anvil. I'm really interested to see what you guys think of them. So thanks for everything you guys do. Thanks for all the liking and sharing and subscribing. It makes a huge difference. So thanks for everything. See ya.